This is the Lean Builders Hoots on the Ground podcast with absolutely, positively no bullshito. Join us as we dig into exactly what lean construction is and how we can use these concepts and strategies in the field. This podcast will be different as we journey to job sites and mine the minds of lean builders, all in effort to pass forward building knowledge from those who have put their time in to learn a better way. Because that's just what lean builders do. What's up, y'all? Adam Hoots here, the Lean Builder, Hoots on the Ground podcast with no bullshito. And I am super fired up. This is the week we have launched the book, The Old Dog Lean Thesaurus. If you don't know about it, you need to find out. Mr. Buddy Brumley and I have been spending about the last year or more on putting together this book, helping to define lean construction into more simple terms, right? Let's make lean simple again. There's been too many consultants, too much bullshito out there, and we're coming after that bullshito with defining lean with super simple terms and things that you can read and hopefully apply on your project site today. So go check it out. Old Dog Lean Thesaurus, grab your copy. Today, it's ironic because I want to talk a little bit about self-doubt. And that's something that has really creeped in my mind over the last three to six months, right? I've been going through some health things, trying to get stabilized with the changes in my life. And self-doubt's been really weighing on me heavy. And so I want to talk today about self-doubt. I believe it's something that We all experience, and if you haven't experienced it, good for you, but I'm sure you will at some point, especially if you're in this lean community where you're continuing to try new things, you're trying to experiment, do things different. A lot of self-doubt comes with that, right? Because we're entering this, this area, this land of the unknown, and am I good enough to go and conquer that land of the unknown? Am I that person that I know I can be? Will I be that person in the heat of the moment? And so that's always, it's a question on me. It's always, especially again, with going through this health stuff over the last few months, man, self-doubt has been creeping into my mind quite a bit. And so whoever this is, maybe it's just for me, but if that's the case, I'll take it. This episode's for you as self-doubt starts to creep into your head because maybe you're entering the land of the unknown or something that you've never done before. You're starting to learn something. Stop it. Have that confidence to say, I know I'm capable. I know I'm able to release this podcast. Again, self-doubt in this pot, like just putting this podcast together. Who am I to talk about self-doubt? I'm experiencing it. So I'm actually very qualified to talk about self-doubt. It can be such like almost a debilitating force in our life where it paralyzes us from action. And I'm here to tell you, and it happens to all of us. And so when it happens, there's some things that you have to, you you can do to get out of that. It doesn't have to be that way, right? And so I'd love to define it a little bit deeper before we dive into those ways where you can get past self-doubt. I think it's important to know and align and agree on what we're talking about. And so for me, and I've spent some time on this definition, but Self-doubt is a feeling of uncertainty or an insecurity about our abilities, about our own capability. It can be caused by a lot of different things, right? It could be caused by uh, past failures. It could be caused by negative feedback. It could be caused by expectations that you set for yourself that you will never obtain. Not looking at self-doubt as a good thing or a bad thing but just a thing, right? It's something that happens to all of us. And I am going to make that broad statement that says, I'm willing to bet every one of you, including me, has experienced self-doubt at one time or another, whether you're walking into a new job or you're walking into whatever situation that is unknown that you're trying to discover and figure out, there's always some type of doubting your own ability, doubting your own capability. And that's what the self-doubt that I'm talking about I think it's important to realize that self-doubt can manifest itself in a bunch of different ways as well. One of the things for me specifically is procrastinating, right? This episode has been on my mind. You can ask, ask Jen and Jess, ask 
the folks out there on the podcast before, I've been inquiring about self-doubt to them so that I can learn enough so that I can deliver a message worth listening to. And and in doing that, I feel like I've experienced that self-doubt in just releasing this podcast. And so I know that's a little bit ironic, but again, it's important to realize that self-doubt manifests itself. Like it becomes obvious when we procrastinate things or when we are trying to like make things perfect. And again, I'll compliment myself here on the old dog lean thesaurus. I had Jesse Hernandez is our editor. And if Jesse, he didn't even read the book, I guarantee it. And so we put it out there because you know what? It's a minimum viable product. It's worth a damn. That's been validated and justified by Manny Hoyo and Thomas Hardy, like all these folks are posting about the book. And that to me says, hey, we're actually helping somebody. And if had I let that perfectionism thing, and props to Buddy, because Buddy will kick me in the butt. Hey man, I'm an old dog. Let's go. Let's we got action. We gotta go. Stop geeking out on this thing and let's make it happen. And so shout out to Buddy for helping me get past that part of it. Like honestly, it wasn't even uh, having Buddy on my team took a lot of the self-doubt out because now it's okay, now it's Buddy and me. And we're going forward and Buddy's been doing this for 45 years. Who's going to tell Buddy he's wrong? And, and I'm sure, Buddy, you probably experienced some self-doubt. And I would love to connect with you and have that conversation because it is real. The other way self-doubt manifests or shows itself is through avoidance, right? Like I will just avoid doing something or talking to something or there's like even I'm, Saturday is my, so tomorrow's my 17th year wedding anniversary and holy cow that's awesome but me and my wife we got a lot to work on and man i have been somewhat avoiding that for the last two or three weeks and man i love this podcast because i get to call myself out to go and do some action and actually speak and live what we're doing here and centering this conversation back to self-doubt i think it's important to realize that a lot of things can cause that self-doubt we listed some of them before, but then self-doubt can manifest itself. So you got to be on the lookout and because man, when it comes, it's like a storm and it will get you. And when it gets you, man, let me tell you, it will just grab a hold of you and take you into a whole nother world of just preventing you from doing new things and achieving goals and just taking the smallest bit of risks, right? You'll just be paralyzed with almost fear of, of, Am I capable of doing this? It can lead to some serious health conditions. A lot of things that we have in the construction industry, depression, anxiety, a low self-esteem, like these are all things that are real. And a lot of them stems from self-doubt. And so as leaders on project teams, how are you eliminating your own self-doubt, but more importantly, other people's self-doubt? When do you, do, are you able to recognize and are you able to realize when self-doubt is taking place? Because there will be signs. They might not be verbal. They might not be like me. Hey, let's just have a podcast and say, hey, I'm doubting myself. Let me just tell the world so that I can get over it. No, there are going to be signs like, like even just my body structure. Yeah. Or soft-spoken, right? And, or bad self-talk, right? Or I couldn't do that or I could not. These are things that we as leaders on construction sites, we've got to be looking out for. We've got to head off at the past. We've got to be able to get in front of that. And we've got to be able to take some action in order to eliminate these self-doubt, not just for ourselves, but our teams that work around us as well. And so there are some things that we can do to overcome self-doubt. And I'm going to give you just some tips and tricks, some things that I use and I, and even those sometimes, again, they don't always work, right? And so the first thing that I would tell you is have a podcast ha, and acknowledge your self-doubt, right? That's the first step in overcoming pretty much anything. That's like the first of the 12 steps or so I've been told. It's acknowledging that I'm having this self-doubt right now. And then once I've acknowledged that, okay, this is what I'm experiencing, right? Like I'm just... There's something about this that doesn't feel right, whether I'm overwhelmed or I'm in something I've never done or I'm over my head. Like, I don't believe I have these capabilities. And when I can acknowledge that I'm starting to think that, now I can start to work on overcoming it. Now I can start to do little things that build my confidence, right? That challenge my negative thoughts. So I'm going to, you know, when those thoughts pop up and it's, oh, yeah, remember back when you were working with, when you experience that same thing and we overcame that as a group 
in the moment together. Like that's the things that really get me energized. And then I can start to say, okay, yeah, now I can challenge that self down. Now I'm going to build myself a little bit stronger and I'm going to ask myself, is that really true? When I like, are the, are things as really as bad as I think they are? Because when I turn around and look at everything that I've accomplished in my life, there's no doubt that I am on the right track and that I am continuously getting better and I am hanging out and circulating myself with the right people in order to escalate me forward into this place of contentment and peace and understanding and acceptance. That's the ultimate goal and where I want to be. And again, self-doubt creeps in my head quite a bit, especially the last few months. And this podcast is a part of me like saying, hold on, time out, wait a minute. Hoots, you just released a book, bro. Like you have, this podcast is amazing. The Lean Builder guys have faith in you. Jen and Jess, who do their live stream every other week, they're geniuses in the lean world. And you got Felipe, the scrum master, and you get to work with lean tact, like all the lean tact homies and Jason Schroeder and Kevin Rice. And these are the people, the Spencer Eastons of the world and the Dwan Does and like, I could pick up the phone and call Dean Reed right now. Like how freaking amazing is that? Or, and again, Hal Maycomer, Terry, like Dr. Milberg, like all of these people would answer a phone call for me. And man, like when I start doubting myself, I actually, one of the things I will do is reach out to my network and I will just call them and say, Hey, how are you? Because a conversation with any of my, Al Bolding, like that's my guy. That's my go-to guy. Me and him got it. A connection for sure. But L.R. Whedon, Tim Ho, all of these people are part of my network and help build me up on a daily basis and, and validate the fact that I should be here and I am in the right spot. And you know what? I need to be a little bit more vocal, and a little bit more active and be able to get out of my own way and go out there and put a book to the world or put a program to the world or a training to the world. And for that, I am forever grateful. But please know that I am not conquering self-doubt alone. Yeah, I can challenge my own thoughts, but I have got to go out and I've got to circulate myself with the right people who are willing to challenge that self-doubt with me and say, Hoots, you are the like you are the bomb, bro. You go and get hooked up to a machine three days a week for four hours at a time. But you know what? You came out swinging in those last three or four months. You and Buddy put that book together. And man, you just drilled it out. You nailed it out. And you made something positive out of something that could be so terrible. And that's where it's at, man. That's like taking those small steps and actions and having the people around you that are going to challenge you in every good way possible. And again, for my people, thank you. We listed a lot of you at the beginning of the book. So go check it out. Super fired up for all of that. Self-doubt is a real thing. And I just encourage everybody, when you start getting into that mindset of, and I really don't think I can do this. I want you to focus on your strengths. I want you to look down deep inside and say, what is my strength? What do I do that is better than most everybody else in this world? And I want to make a list of it, right? Like I want to focus on those. I want to write them down. I want to be intentional and be strategic about those. And that's going to help you to start building your confidence. Uh, another thing that's really important, again, that I struggle with quite a bit is we've got to set realistic goals, right? Don't set yourself up for failure by seeking expectations that are beyond your control, beyond things that you're actually capable of. And so start small with achievable goals and then build upon them and make them a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, right? We're talking about the small J versus the big J change. If you haven't checked out my LinkedIn, I've got a, an article pinned that I put together two, three years ago on small J versus big J, a realization I had trying to convince teams the change in the construction industry. We've got to do it in small J's, big J's. We just lose confidence. So go check that out. But we've got to set realistic goals and we got to realize productivity before we lose too much. And then here's most important. Like, again, who are you surrounding yourself with? Go get help if you need it. Construction industry, it is okay to have a therapist. It is okay to put together a group of people who just vent together. It is okay to call somebody, call me, and we can have a conversation and I can ask you some questions so that you can self-discover what is going on in your life so that just don't be afraid to reach out and get help. I know this industry. I know what you're going to say. That's not what my father told me or that's not what my superintendent says or 
man, I can't tell anybody else this. Like, this is, I'm the only one experiencing bullshit. Like, we are all going through hell in this industry. That is one thing that I recognized as I left one organization and I went to another organization and I left that organization and I went to all of them were in disarray. All of them have self-doubt even building up within the own organization. And so as an organization, what do we do that's really well? Let's stick to that. Let's do that. Let's build some confidence so that then we can have confidence to go outside of our comfort zone and explore the unknown. Because as we've covered in other episodes, that's when we learn and that's when we grow as individuals is when we do get outside that comfort zone. But man, let me tell you, when you approach that comfort zone, that self-doubt just... Again, I said it earlier, it could be debilitating. It really can be. And so don't be afraid to get help. If you need a therapist, if you need a counselor, reach out. There's plenty of us in the industry that have those. They can help you like design strategies to overcome self-doubt, or they can help you figure out other ways or methods of dealing with your self-doubt. Because again, that's something that we all deal with. And I think that's really important that we can acknowledge that. And then we can start to overcome that and help one another and then look out for that within the community because that self-doubt will absolutely paralyze innovation. And so don't let that stop you. Don't let that stop your team. It is like it is a common problem, but it's not insurmountable, right? By following some of these tips, you can overcome self-doubt and you can achieve your goals. And so I want to end this episode with a story of the buffalo and the cow. And so my question to you before I tell you the story is, are you a buffalo or are you a cow? Here's what happens between the two. And so there's a storm approaching this field full of buffaloes and cows. And the buffaloes start running right at the storm. And so that's their natural instinct and approach to life is to run right at the storm. Whereas the cows will actually turn around the other way and they will run away from the storm, right? They don't want to experience the storm. And so what's interesting between the buffalo and the cow is if you're the buffalo and you're running right at the storm, then you're going to experience less of the storm than if you're the cow running with the storm as the storm is chasing me. And so I want you to really think deep down in your heart, are you the type of person that's going to run right at self-doubt? Are you the type of person that's going to turn around and run away from self-doubt? Because Chances are, if you're the cow running away from self-doubt, then you're likely going to experience more self-doubt, which just builds on itself and will steamroll you into inaction. And so my encouragement to you is to be the buffalo. When you see the storm coming, when you recognize that storm coming, run right at that storm, give it heck, and you'll get through it so much faster, so much cleaner, and so much happier on the other side. And man, this has been honestly, a little bit empowering, a little bit enlightening to be able to stand here and talk to you about self-doubt when it's something that's been so real and loud in my head. It's just liberating to let it go and put it into the omniverse, as some say, and and let y'all experience that with me. Because again, I am regular, right? I am a regular human being and uh, self-doubt has really paralyzed me over the last month or two. And I'm looking forward to breaking through this, finding some stability in my life, and moving forward and building on my strengths and my confidence into the next episode. And with that, Lean Builder Nation, thank you for your time. Like I said, go get the book, The Old Dog Lean Thesaurus. Become part of our community, but you can only do so by getting the book and understanding exactly what that means. And so I look forward to having you a part of the Old Dog Lean community as we build upon the Lean Builder and all the amazing things that they put together from a foundational perspective. And until next time, we're going to keep on changing the industry because that's just what Lean Builders do, baby. Mm-hmm.